And it's gotta be Greetings, Spidey fans. This is Stan the Man Lee coming at you with color commentary where we give you views from a different side. We've got a great show for you today. There's going to be twists. There's going to be turns. There's going to be daring. There's going to be scary. Let's see if your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man can get out of this one. <laughs> That's my best Stan Lee uh, impression that I got. That man has such a unique voice. I've never been able to uh, in intimidate him. Excuse me, imitate him. <laughs> I don't know if I can uh, intimidate him either. He's got he's pulled a gun on Deadpool. So, but anyway, uh, we wanted to give a tribute to Stan Lee because we're going to be talking about him today. But of course, as usual, we're going to be talking about some of your favorite movies. We got two. So real quick, let's go ahead and pop on over to let's talk about Stan the Man Lee. And I have a question, I think. Hopefully I have a question. I don't see what I'm talking about. So I want to pass it on over to Mr. Danny Quick, who is a comic book creator himself, and allow him to talk about Mr. Stan the Man Lee here. Some people probably don't even know who he is. There's there's no way that you follow us. There's no person that's watching our video that doesn't know who Stan Lee is. That, that's number one, because he was so impactful to the stuff that we talk about. Um, even today, we weren't even talking about uh, Marvel movies, and we brought uh, Magneto into it because of... Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, Stan, Stan Lee, as a creator... Uh, like I was talking to y'all before, he really saved. He's really one of the one of the things that saved um, comic books, even you know, fifty years ago, forty years ago, um, when he was a young lad. I think. Would you say he was thirty eight when he wrote Fantastic Four? Um, thirty nine. Thirty nine when he wrote Fantastic Four, he was on the verge of quitting, and um, and thank God he didn't quit. You know, uh, and here he is, uh, two thousand eighteen, and probably the most one of the most popular most famous writers and creators in the world um i literally have a stack of comic books right here on my desk look i got spider-man i got a bunch of indie comic books i got uh ghost rider spot more spider-man the avengers and x-men i got uh black panther i got wolverine versus the hulk I got Batman and Robin. I got classic, classic X Men. This is this X Men comic was from 1988. It's like um, I got the main man Icon. Um, a lot of people don't know about Icon. Uh, Stanley didn't create Icon. It was Dwayne McDuffie, but uh, but still, Dwayne McDuffie, um, one of my favorite writers and creators. He died a few years back, but he um. He talked about how Stanley was influential to even him. Um, so, you know, um, the only thing I can say is, especially as a writer and as a fan, we try to, you know, pick up and keep inspiring people through our, our creations. And, um, yeah. Um, and also he was a veteran. Uh, the young man, you know, Veterans Day was was um, last last weekend. And he was a veteran of World War II, I believe. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we appreciate his service to the country and to our fandom. So, um, absolutely. Tip of the hat and rest in peace to um, Stan. The, Stan. And I, I like your uh, your uh, impression. I think you did a pretty good job with your impression. Mm -hmm. at the yeah, the show. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's the closest I've ever come to doing it because I've never been able to to come close at all to it. I just couldn't. I just can't do his voice for some reason. So, mm -hmm. appreciate that. <laughs> Cool. Is that all you wanted to say there, sir? Yes, sir. What about you, uh, Chuck Taylor? Uh, Stan. Stan Lee. Yeah, that was um, – he's definitely – see, I guess I'll come come from a, another side of things. I, I didn't really read a lot of the comic books, to be honest with you. So, like, what, the way I got introduced to comic – well, to the superheroes was more of the cartoons and things like that. So, kind of seeing him cameo – 
the cameo is really like, who is that old guy with the glasses? <laughs> I keep seeing him on like all these cartoons I like, mm -hmm. and I was like, kind of intrigued. Like he's he's a funny dude, and like I would like as I got more into comics and you know superhero the worlds of you know DC and Marvel and things like that. Um, I was I was introduced to Stanley. I was like, oh okay, he's pretty cool. And then of course you know when Marvel came out with the actual movies, um, he's become like epic with all the cameos. So he's like the cameo guy. Like, all my kids mm -hmm. know that's the old guy on all all the movies. So when I told him that the guy from uh, Stan Lee died, he was like, who's Stan Lee? And they're like, and they saw the picture. He's on all the movies. He mm -hmm. died. So they were all torn up, you know, you know, because oh. they recognize him from you know. All the movies that they grow up watching, and I, and I watch, and I see them cameo on everything, you know. And you know, so we've seen them on the television side, and now that I guess comic books and superheroes are really more the mainstream now, they're really hip, and it's not a nerdy thing more. It's more like you know, it's like the cool thing, you know. The gear is is cool. Everybody rocks it. Everybody goes see all the movies and stuff. The, the top um, celebrities are in the movies. And Marvel just makes brands. So, and he's the creator of it. You know, he's the one that bit, was there when they weren't making any money, when they went bankrupt and they had to sell things off. I mean, just kind of seeing like a person's basically his dream and all his all his thought and all his energy he put into something just fall and fail. And basically kind of seeing him not giving up and seeing where it ended and how many people he touched is amazing. So, I know they mm -hmm. definitely need to put a movie together and because that's an amazing story. Like just hearing it like, wow, your whole dream basically got crushed because you thought you were robbed, but then you made a couple of bad mistakes and that really cost you your whole business. And I mean, I mean, that was, a, and then he comes back to what he is now. Like now Marvel is like the top grossing brand in the world mm -hmm. like for the like last 10 years, you know? So that's, and and that was because of him and and his writers that he that he worked with, um, you know. So I definitely think that he's made an impact on a lot of lives, not just in the comic book world or the nerd world, just in the world itself. You know, from little kids to grown people to old people, every he's influenced people in so many different ways. So I know that's gonna be missed. And every time I see Stan, he makes me he kind of like brightens up your days. Like you see him in a movie or you see him on a on a picture or something like that with the shades mm. on and his same look. Even like when I saw <laughs> when um he was sick in the hospital and things, and like how he was just always so happy, you know, always happy with life and wanting to share and and build other people up. It was like, wow, this guy's inspiring. Like he's not like right. you know, just focused on himself. Like he's always looking to help other people get better. And I mm -hmm. like the picture Tori showed me um, when he went to see Stan Lee. Like, Stan Lee's pretty old, guys. Like, yeah. I would have, I mean, like, we got to think about this. Like, if I'm 90 something years old, I'm not coming to Comic Con and nothing about <laughs> people hug me and touch me. Right. That's something that he loved to do. He loved to be there. He loved to, you know, you know, be around the fans and just, he give all, everything he had to him. So I, I'm very impressed with the man. He's awesome. So I'm glad he's able to inspire my cousin. To keep going, he got lumberjack. Look at all those, those comic books back there. So he, we might have this. Might be talking to the next Stan Lee right here in a couple, That's like right. you know, forty years. We'll see. Mm. Uh, if it don't we'll work see. out by the time I'm forty, I'm done. There ain't, there ain't, gonna, there ain't gonna be no resurgence. <laughs> this is a wrap. <laughs> no resurgence. Oh, sell all the properties and then make billions on them and bring yeah, them back to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that patience that Stan Lee had. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I I really respect you, Stan. Thanks for you know being uh you know pillar in the with your life. Uh, you did a lot of great things, and I hope everybody continue to you know take what you what you brought to this earth and move it forward for the best. All respect to the legend. Respect. <laughs> so. Here's a question for you guys, everybody that's watching. What do the following... Oh, real quick, uh, Daniel, did you show your picture? I don't think you um, did. I got my, my picture here. Me and This is the picture that Chuck was talking about. Me and uh, Stan the Man here from uh, NC Comic Con, or Heroes Con in Charlotte. This was 2012, so he was 89 mm -hmm. at that time. So he was already uh -huh. old. <laughs> Let yeah. me tell you, man, that's a great picture. 
That is like some of the best copying and pasting I've ever seen in a picture. Yeah, I Photoshop pretty well. Do, do pretty good Photoshop. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Uh, all of our viewers that are watching, what do the following actors have in common? <clears throat> Wesley Snipes, Chris Christopherson, Patrick Stewart, Sir Ian McKellen, Hugh Jackman, Haley Berry, Toby Maguire, William Defoe, James Franco, J.K. Simmons, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner, Michael Clark Duncan, Lawrence Fishburne, John Travolta, Dolph Lundgren, Louis Gossip Jr., Nicholas Cage, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Peter Dinklage, Robert Downey Jr., Kenneth, I mean, uh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Terrence Howard, Jeff Bridges, Paul Bettany, Don Cheadle, Sam Rockwell, Charlotte Johansson, Ben Kingsley, Guy, Rich, uh, Guy Ritchie, Chris Evans, Hugo Reaving, Haley Atwell, Sebastian Stan, Anthony Mackie, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Anthony Hopkins, Jeremy Renard, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Zazie Beetz, Terry Crews, Paul Rudd, Michelle Pfeiffer, James Spader, Elizabeth Olsen, Aaron Taylor Johnson, mm -hmm. Andy Serkis, Martin Freeman, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Wong, Chaz McBoseman, Chad Wick Bozeman, Michael B. Jordan, Lapita, uh, mm -hmm. whatever last name is, Danae Niego, Danae Guerrero, Danae Guerrero, Daniel Kalua, yeah, right, Walking Dead Lady, For, uh, Forrest <laughs> Whitaker, Angela Bassett, Letitia Wright, Winston Duke, uh, Sterling uh, K. Brown, uh, John, was it John Berthel, Charlie Cox. What do these people all have in common? They're all actors. Every, Every single one of those has been in a Marvel movie or TV show. And that's not even everybody, because I didn't even mention you, uh, any of the characters from, uh, from Luke Cage. Um, oh, Lou Ferrigno, I didn't mention him. It's so, uh, the late girls uh, from um, Iron Fist, you know, we don't need to mention him. Jessica Jones, I mean, <laughs> Howard the Duck. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Amazing! If you look at that, you look at how many actors, uh, the how and the world of entertainment has been affected by Marvel and Marvel comics. Now let's let's be real here. Let's show everybody understands. Stan Lee didn't start Marvel comics. It was it was well it was there well before he was. It was called Timely Comics, and then they changed the name when he got there. You know, around that time, um, and he didn't even create. Fantastic Four, which was their like first really big hit. They already had Captain America. They already had Namor. But around that time when uh, Fantastic Four came out, like DC was like destroying them, <laughs> and he was about to quit. And then he came out with this character, uh, this family of characters, the Fantastic Four. And it wasn't just like, hey, I'm Superman. I come in and save the day, and I'm gone, you know. But a a, a family of characters that have real issues, and Spider Man, you know, a nerdy guy who had real issues. And then he fought for equality. You know, when you're talking about introducing characters like Black Panther, he introduced Black Panther before the Black Panther Party even came out. And he introduced that character. This is the first African American, excuse me, the first black character in mainstream comics. You know, um, I mean, he introduced him at a time when that wasn't the thing to do, you know. Then uh, he introduced Falcon, Sam Wilson, the first African-American superhero in, in, in comics, in mainstream comics. And the X-Men, you know, based off the Civil Rights Movement and Martin Luther King and um, uh, Malcolm X. I mean, just an amazing guy. He worked with inc incredible people. He was the one that was, you know, helping to, to steer the Incredible Hulk TV show that came out years ago because they wanted to make the Hulk red because you know that's that symbolizes anger. <laughs> you know, I mean, all all throughout this time, you know, he was pushing to get uh, comics into Hollywood, and they just fought him. They just would not do it. They said, "No, comics don't belong in in Hollywood." It wasn't until Howard the Duck, and then really Blade in 1999. So you're talking about decades and decades and decades later that Hollywood would finally start to become accepting of some of the Marvel properties. That's a lot of pushing, man. So, and this movie, man, is now you know Marvel. Uh, the MCU has been great, really, in the last 
10 years. So this man pushed all the way until he was 85 years of age. And of course, it wasn't all him. And also he left Marvel for a time, but he was still the spokesman, you know, the representative of Marvel. And, you know, to see his dream come true, that's inspiring to me. You know, I have a company where we sell music and instruments to marching bands all across the nation, which I didn't mention earlier. So I'm saying that now. And I want to be like that. You know, I want to be able to, throughout what happens, I want to be able to push through until, you know, my company is recognized, you know, nationwide for, be, for doing the things that we're doing. I want to have the patience of Stan Lee and the, the personality to, to be the role model, the person that's standing out front for my company, you know, and any other. And with color commentary, you know, same thing. You know, I want us to, to be able to, to push through regardless of the subscribers or the viewers or any of that type of stuff. I want us to be able to push through to see our dreams achieved, man. And that's what Stan Lee did. And the man died a multimillionaire. You know, you talk about a man who wanted to quit, wanted to go back to using his real name, which is Stan, Stan Lee something. I can't Lieber. remember what his last name is. Stan and, Lee. Huh? Stan Lee Lieberman. Lieberman. He wants to get out of that. And this man, his wife helped him to stay in. And he died a multimillionaire and an extremely well-recognized person. I wish he could have made more money off of his characters, but hey, you know, still, because, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that Robert Downey Jr. is making <laughs> multiple times the money playing the character that he created. So, uh, Daddy, you want to make sure you get your contracts right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan be playing uh, Ace Blade. Just make sure that you uh, get your contracts in order. Hey, but, I just um, tweeted from yesterday, so we'll see. There you go. <laughs> Last thing I'm gonna say, man, is I just remember him uh, way back in the '80s, man, watching um, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And I, I didn't know who Stan Lee was. I just heard his verse. Hey, this is hey Spider friends. This is Stan Lee. You know, we got a great story for you today. Spider-Man and Firestar, and I and you know, just his voice was just so captivating to me. You know, and then when I started getting into comics, which came later, I recognized, oh, that's the same guy. So. Uh, hats off to you, Stan Lee, for everything you did, man. You're a true inspiration, and thank you. And it's gotta be Sentimental's Project. That's the only thing that's soothing my soul. Turn on the TV to power.